So after the How to Stream Fighting Game Events video came out, I had some people ask me what kind of components I would recommend for their PCs, the stream PCs that they're building. Now I don't position myself as a hardcore tech enthusiast, but I have built a few streaming PCs, and there are certain things I look for in terms of components that I think could be useful for you as well. So what I'm looking to do is to stream and record. I want to be able to stream at 1080p, 60fps at medium, and I want to be able to record at the highest quality possible. That way, if it needs to be used for archives or highlights. And as a special bonus, I don't want a huge monster tank PC because I have to lug this thing around to different events. So for this edition of Stream Tech, we're going to design a PC that's going to be used for live streaming events. So as always, there's affiliate links in the descriptions for the products that I mentioned. It really helps the channel because it takes lots and lots of coffee to write all these scripts and record these videos late at night. So the first and most important component you're going to buy for your stream PC is the CPU. This is where you want to put all your budget and money towards. Now that's not to say that you need to buy some 32 core or 20 core monster. In fact, 16 to 20 is a sweet spot and you can get away with eight cores as well. And both Intel and AD have awesome offerings. Since you're going to be using X264 encoding, I really recommend watching this video by Epos Fox. He really goes deep into all the X264 settings and talks about why people shouldn't use the slow preset and using the medium preset is fine. So in terms of specific CPUs, on the Intel side of things, you can start off with the 9900K. Even though this is pretty expensive, it's still kind of the cheapest option you want to start with. And you can bump that up to the 9900X, but I wouldn't go higher than the 9960. On the AMD side of things, I would recommend waiting until the 3900X is out. If you need to buy something now, the 2700X is a great budget option. And at the higher end, I wouldn't go higher than the Threadripper line, and the 2950X is a good sweet spot. So the next thing you're going to want to select is your motherboard. Now the most important things to look at here are expandability and portability. So if you want the most portable motherboard and PC build overall, you want to go for a mini ITX or micro ATX. The only problem here is when it comes to expandability, because these have a limited amount of PCIe slots, you might only be able to put in one capture card. So that's maybe four full HD inputs max. Now, if you want the maximum expandability and to be able to put multiple capture cards, you're gonna wanna go with the micro ATX, which usually can handle two, or a full on ATX motherboard. So I really don't have a preference over one brand or another on motherboards. It's really only your choice. I don't care about things like Wi-Fi or RGB colors or anything like that. So picking a GPU for your streaming setup is the easiest choice possible. Just get an NVIDIA 1660. In fact, even if you have an old crappy PC around, you can turn it into a legit encoding machine because with the 1660, you get access to the new improved NVENC, which is awesome for streaming and recording. And you can actually stream and record with just a single card. You never need to get a more advanced GPU like a 20 series or a Quadro unless you're doing really crazy projector work by outputting different resolutions and stuff. And I don't mean to disparage on AMD, but NVENC is really important to your whole workflow. And one final tip is to make sure to remove your GPU whenever you travel with your machine, because it tends to get loose on the motherboard and it can just damage your whole PC. So the third, but possibly most important choice is the PC case that you buy. So if you have a micro ATX or a mini ITX board, you can buy these really small cases that you might be able to take as carry-on luggage to the plane, which saves a lot in shipping and luggage fees. So one brand, Silverstone, actually carries a wide variety of cases for mini ITX and micro ATX builds, and I've had a lot of success with those. So you pretty much have unlimited options when it comes to ATX cases, and you're probably gonna have to put this PC as your check-in luggage or ship it to the event. So you're gonna want something really sturdy because you're probably gonna have more expensive components in this type of PC. So some things to avoid with these kind of cases is like LED lights or tempered glass panels because this is easy to get damaged in transit. And some benefits to have is easy access to the internals of the PC in case you need to swap out a capture card really quickly. So a good budget option is the Corsair Carbide line. They're pretty cheap, but they're pretty sturdy. So when it comes to hard drives for your stream PC, for your boot drive, you're gonna want the fastest drive possible. It doesn't need a lot of storage, but you need to be able to start your PC quickly 
because streaming is a blow up and sometimes you need a restart. So for your secondary drive, it doesn't need to be anything flashy. It can be a mechanical drive or even an SSD. What you need is a large storage space, terabytes and terabytes, mainly because NVENC files are huge when you record them. So next up is RAM. If you wanna save a few bucks here, all you really need is 16 gigs. Now, if you're gonna use this PC as like a workstation to edit video and stuff, get 32 gigs. And RAM speed isn't such a big thing, but just make sure that the RAM is compatible with your PC and don't pay extra for getting like LED RAM or anything like that. So when it comes to picking the cooler for your PC, it basically depends how much you're gonna travel. If you're gonna be traveling a lot by planes, trains, automobile, then get an air cooler. So the Noctua series is pretty good for this. And don't skip on it because when you're encoding at 1080p medium, that CPU is gonna be hot. Now I have traveled a lot with a PC that has a liquid cooler and thankfully haven't had problems. But you never know, all it takes is just someone dropping the PC the wrong way, which happens a lot when they put it on the planes, and then everything is ruined. Now the last thing is to pick your power supply, and I don't like to go cheap on this. I like to get either the platinum or gold tier and at least 850 watts. Now I'm not saying you need to do that, but you're gonna be plugging this PC into some sketchy places. And speaking of sketchy places and sketchy venues, I really recommend buying a UPC because all these venues tend to have bad wiring or the power goes out and you don't want some ghetto venue basically blowing up your $2,000 plus streaming machine. Now, the last thing you're wondering is, okay, I got all the parts, how do I build this? Well, considering there's infinite possibilities, I can't really cover every one of them, but I'll link to some really useful informative guides like this one. Just to have a little bit extra and layer it on top of the CPU. The final portion. But seriously, there's some links in the description for some really good PC build guides that I found online. Oh yeah, so there's some also cool extras to consider for your streaming setup. The first thing is your mouse and keyboard. Now it might sound great to bring your huge click clack mechanical keyboard, but when you really gotta keep the weight down, it's even better to get like a small wireless keyboard and mouse combo. Like I use the Razer Turret for my events. Another important thing is monitors. So if you're doing like FGC events, usually they have a few extra monitors laying around. But if you're using this PC for other events, a lot of times they won't be able to provide you with the monitor. So a good thing to do is to get these small little portable monitors. So Asus and Guykick both make pretty great small monitors. They can be USB powered and they just take an HDMI. Super, super useful. So that about does it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you wanna find out more about how to stream fighting game events, click on this video here. If you wanna see all my stream tutorials, you can click on this video here. And as always, subscribe. Peace.